Good morning, everybody. It is September 4th today. Um, it is very smoky. That's actually smoke, but a little bit of rain. Um, we're at the South Farm. Once again, We were. I just got back from the North Farm. I'm up at the North Farm at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. Because it's harvest season and there's a lot going on. And anyways, I tested the derm up north. It is a go. But I am needed for three more days down here because we are venturing off, as you can clearly see, on a road trip, which is our longest move here at the South Farm. No, we're not going to the North Farm. We're just going to the north tip of the South Farm, which is like, I don't know, 70 miles or something like that. So we are moving nine combines. Yes, we have 10, but we're moving nine. And uh, two grain carts, some support equipment, and uh, we called in some extra help from some friends to run trucks, I think. I think we'll have six trucks going. We're hauling it all back to 70 miles, so uh, we're hauling it all back home. And uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. So Mike, why don't you take 10? Because we just don't have the manpower to keep that away. Because the more com the your combine capacity is as only as good as your grain cart capacity and also a your truck capacity. You gotta haul it all back. Well, Mike, why don't you set up a grain bag up there? We have, we, we typically do that. Uh, last year we did that, the year before we've done that. Um, but this year, being that it's mustard, and mustard isn't a typically a high yield anyway, we think that we can probably just about get it all home without putting a grain bag, and then that would be saving a grain bag cost and uh, that would be saving the extra cost and labor going back up to pick up the grain bag literally in about seven days time because we are about three quarters of the way done harvest down here at the south farm things are going pretty well um obviously it's a poor crop we all know that but, you know, we're not gonna keep talking about that but it is but yeah we're moving so we're all pulling our headers and uh we're on a road trip. We make this move every year. Drills and combines make this move every year. So the smoke is from the wildfires up here where you have some serious wildfires just about in every province burning. It's been a really dry year. I also, I should mention that way up there is Dad. He is piloting us, woo, right there. And then we also have pilot behind us. So it's morning, we try and move. You try and move strategically when you're gonna make a long move because most of it will be highway. We try and stay off the highway as much as we possibly can, but a lot of the terrain doesn't allow us to take back routes. It's uh, a lot of pasture in some areas of the move. Um, there is absolutely no roads through other than the highway. The highway is the single only road going through, at least wide enough for us combines to get through. So you try and plan your move around traffic. You try and go early morning. Um, you try not to go on a weekend. And uh, being that it's kind of light drizzling and rain, that's even better for the move because that's gonna take out a lot of uh, the local harvest traffic that's still going, like a lot of the semis and maybe other farmers that are actually out in the fields because right now it's kind of drizzling rain and they won't be out in the field. So that should free up a little bit of that traffic as well. So this is so far a win-win. We will see, but so far this is a win-win. I will see you guys when we get to the highway. First, we gotta go down a big hill here. Hold on, we gotta slow down, slowing down. We're gonna go down this at about 10 mile an hour, or 12, I guess. The reason why we're slowing down is I think this is like a, I don't even know, there is no great sign, but it's pretty steep and it's pretty long. So we wanna maintain in control. You got a header back there pushing you. If you ever blew a relief valve, that would be the most terrifying experience of your life. <laughs> oh man, that would be bad. Oh man, I've heard of that happening to guys actually. Going down a hill, blow the relief valve off their hydro, and all of a sudden then you're freewheeling. Whew, you'd be hitting those brakes so fast. 
trying to hold you. <laughs> you can't really see in my mirrors because it's kind of wet and rainy, but we do have combines behind us and we I did check, our header is still there. This would be some of the terrain that you would have to get through if you didn't want to take the highway. First of all, you wouldn't have a road like this. So it's really uh, not possible. It's not a lot of roads in and out of this operation down here. All right, I think we're good. Start picking up a little more speed here. All right. All right, we just got to the highway. So uh, we're gonna do our checks, which we always do. Take a pit stop if need be, and we're gonna be uh, back on the road here. All right, it's cold out here, you guys. It's like raining, misty, smoky, whole nine yards. So we always wanna check, make sure everything's good. Everything's hooked up. Wheel bearings look good. Header still on the trailer, that's a good sign. Everything looks awesome. All right, we're out of here. All right, let's hit the highway. Can't see, can't see the rain and the smoke, but so I should mention that our headers are actually offset. I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed that before. So that means our header hitches, I should say, our header hitches are offset to offset our header trailer. So we can put the combine down the ditch a little ways to make sure that we can get over for traffic and then our header is perfectly in our lane here. Um, on the ideals, we actually ran into that, with problems with that actually with the Fent ideals, is because they put their hitch center. So when we would go down the ditch to get around somebody, our header wanted to go down the ditch, so it was very problematic. But we are definitely big fans of the offset hitch. So, we got a long move. I will catch you guys on the flipper. So we got our first car coming behind us. Um, so the combines are getting over as the car keeps coming. Now, normally when we're moving 10 combines, we try and stay in two blocks of five. Try to keep two uh, blocks of five tight and then keep a space in the middle. Um, this time, we're trying to do that, but we're also trying to keep, we're, all, we're not trying to be so tight because not necessarily can you get by five combines and headers. So we're trying to make sure there's space between each combine so vehicles can get in and out. And it is dangerous if you're gonna stay tight together because if one operator up front has a problem or uh, you know maybe doesn't have quite as much experience and confidence and you drop that your back steer tire right over that lip of that pavement, you can go for quite a ride. It would do this with you, and then all of a sudden you got the header wagging the tail, and tail wagging the dog, and a lot of bad things can happen. So uh, it is important to make sure you do keep some space in between, you know, for that reason. But when we get over, we have pretty much a, just, just about a full lane here, so people can get by us. Combines moving is, pretty easy to move combines it's drills you line up five or six drills the drills are 28 and a half feet wide all right we're only like a line and a half but if we actually get over if someone's coming we can just about open up a whole lane so we do our best and with the pilots up there we want to make sure that people do stay safe and yes we are gonna inconvenience you if you're on the highway we do apologize for that, but we this is our only route out. We can't there's no back roads. 
So uh, we got to take the highways to get to our fields. For at least some of the highways to get to our fields. So please be patient. And yes, you might it might take you a few minutes to get by everybody. You might have to pass three combines, wait for a vehicle, pass five combines, wait for a vehicle, pass a couple more vehicles or combines, and you're free to go. But uh, we do see you back there. We are all in constant communication with everybody. And uh, when it's safe, we will pull over and make sure that you can get by. We all want to go home to our families, every one of us, including you guys as well. So this is just the season, seeding and harvest season. There's always lots of big, heavy equipment on the road. So please watch out for us as we're trying to watch out for you. And uh, be patient. Thanks, guys. So we've met three vehicles, which is not bad. We're actually all stitched right now. You can't see that, but there's big spaces between each combine and grain cart, which spread us out over a very, very long distance. But it's super, I shouldn't say it's super safe, nothing safe, but it's a lot safer when uh, passing. They just gotta do one combine at a time, stitch in, stitch out, stitch in, stitch out, versus trying to get by a block of combines. So we are stitched and uh, the move is actually going really well. We had a couple out of province uh, people come up from behind us and they trailed us for a long time. I think that they thought that we were gonna just stop and let them by and uh, we don't stop and let somebody buy unless they have a trailer on, over dimension, semi, uh, but if it's just a small car, uh, we won't just stop and let them buy. Unless they've been back there for, for forever. <laughs> and then maybe we will when it's safe. But we pretty much just keep right on and truck it. All right, we're just getting off the highway here. We got uh, one car locked in with us here for a little while. I think he's been there for about uh, probably 15 minutes, I would say. But um, I think he's at, I actually know he's at province, so. It's always the out of province vehicles because they're not locals, right? They they don't know. They don't necessarily know to pull into an approach to let you by if they see you oncoming. And they don't know that they gotta go by you when safe, when, tra when trailing behind you. But all the locals, all they know, they'll just go do their own thing, get off and approach, let's go, big wave. That's people from Saskatchewan. All right, now we got a lot of miles of grid. So, a couple cons with the windshield wiper. The side wiper, when you turn it on, doesn't stay up. It goes, this is its down position. But then all that runs no, down your window. Like, you like why wouldn't they, oh, 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 turn that radio off for a second. Why wouldn't they stop the windshield wiper up top? That way that doesn't run down your window. And I tried to manually stop it up there, but it doesn't, it always comes back to there. So, that's a con, that's a con for sure. And another con is, I'm pretty sure this X9 is wider, actually without getting out and measuring it, it feels wider, I'm pretty sure I'm wider. And that highway that we move on is super narrow and it's problematic. I definitely would prefer an S because they're narrower for that purpose. And with pulling this 50 foot back there with the header trailer, you know, you're pulling quite a bit of weight. I think the header is like, 14 or 15,000 pounds or something like that plus the trailer well it takes a lot of power so you got it you can't run in road mode I'm running road mode which means I'm at 1700 rpm but you cannot climb the big hills at 1700 rpm you gotta you gotta pull it out of road mode and uh, let her high idle to 1900 rpm which is the highest it is actually unlike an S series it goes like to 21 2200 rpm and uh, and even then, you'll go in second gear, you're full hydro forward and you are coming all the way down to about 12 miles an hour. I'm like, oh dang, I'm gonna have to shift this stupid thing. And everybody else is behind me. They're like, do we need to push you? Do we need to push you, Mike? Mike! <laughs> oh, I'm the slowest when I'm climbing the hills, that's for sure. Well, we're still going and now it's really starting to rain. It's starting to lay some water in the tracks here of dad's vehicle we're getting our combines and our headers muddy and it's driving me absolutely bonkers welcome to the grasshopper season up here one more pit stop look at how dirty my combine is 
That's ridiculous. <laughs> There's Frankles. It's actually really raining out here right now. It is raining. Wow, I'm going back inside. What's funny is uh, Jared's windshield wiper quit on his S series. <laughs> oh, you're all laughing at him. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh my goodness. And it couldn't happen to a more hilarious guy too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're like, Mike, what are these? I know you probably think that that's for chapel, but let's be honest, this is Mike's pastime when he's on an auto steer. He just, every time he looks in his grain tank to check his sample, he's always like, wee, 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 wee. That's all Mike does. <laughs> and we have arrived to the old yard where we are. We're all trying to tuck into this old yard uh, because we can't get to the field because we actually have to uh, unhook our header. One has to unhook the header cut an area into the field so everybody can get in to unhook all their headers but it's still drizzling and raining so we're all just trying to get in off the road it's going to get a little tight we're going to see how we are with tetris but um we've made it safe and sound it's jared and uh we'll see we're going to place hopefully no uh combine demolition we're trying to get ourselves back out of this situation but i'll catch you guys on the flipper out of it could probably go up the quad yeah, he could. I think we get one more combine behind Jared here. We, we don't use any of these bins. Or you can follow Jared. Put my, put my shoes on here. Oh, I got it all dirty. I don't like that. Oh, look at my header. Oh, that's messy. Okay, guys. We're gonna pack all these combines in here like sardines. And then, uh, I better go help. Uh, I gotta go help here. I'll be right back. Adios, see you next video.